So let's start. Welcome everybody. And this talk, so the previous talk was about Hadoop and, and scheduling and execution. So this talk is about storage and mainly about Apache Hadoop Ozone, which is a new sub project and object store. But, you know, it's, it's harder to understand what is Ozone without the context that how, how is it different from from HDFS, for example. So this is what we will, we will talk about, that what is Ozone, how is it different from the HDFS, and what does it mean for for the Hadoop ecosystem? Because the context is, is very important to, to compare Ozone with HDFS. This is my context, actually. So I'm a Hadoop PMC, and the Redis PMC, and I'm working for Cloudera as a principal software engineer. And Mainly, I'm working on the Hadoop Ozone, but um, I'm also, also working on a project in my free time just to containerize Apache Big Data project in Kubernetes. So if you are interested, you can check this Flexible, which is a Kubernetes resource generator or the Flocker. But back to the important part, Hadoop storage. So let's start from the beginning. So. Hadoop is roughly 15 years old. And I think I don't need to explain that today, this is a totally different time, right? This is uh, 2020 and we are just sitting at home and, and participating in that conference, which is awesome. But this is not the same time what we had when Hadoop was designed. And the technical environment is also changed. The change, fortunately, it's not so dramatic as, as the change in our environment, but, but you know, this is a diff different word. For example, we have streaming. HDFS was designed to support very huge files. And today, it's, it's pretty important to support streaming, for example, which can generate a lot of small files. And we have a lot of ecosystem or separated ecosystem, machine learning, data science, and it's not enough just to support the Hadoop compatible file system, which can be used from Flink, Spark, Hive, HBase, but we need something to, to talk with different ecosystem. So that's what we have today. So if I ask the, what is the Hadoop storage today, I think the obvious answer is that HDFS. Actually, this is just one part of the of the the story uh, because we have another one, the Hadoop compatible file system. Usually, it's it's not mentioned, but it's also important because this is the part which can be used to access any cloud provider, right? This is the S3A connector and all of the other cloud connectors. And we have different type of problems on, on, the, on the two sides. So the HDFS is well known about a problem, the small files problems, we will, we will check it later. And it's, there is also a limitation that the easiest way to use HDFS is just using the Hadoop compatible file system. And it's harder to use from Python based machine learning tool, for example. On the other hand, if we use a cloud provider, we also have some, also can have some problems. So, for example, sometimes some prov some providers, some cloud providers, has only eventually consistent object store, or and yeah, there are some limited. There could be some limitations with the uh, object store. They couldn't be started on prem. So, roughly five years ago, a few. Uh, HDFS and Hadoop developers started to think to provide something which can fix all of the problems and which is very sim something which is very similar to the HDFS but provides object store semantics like the S3, so object store for the Hadoop ecosystem. And the work is started. Uh, at first, it started as a feature branch in Hadoop. This was the HDFS 7240. 
Uh, and after a long discussion, it's merged to the Hadoop code base, the, 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 the Hadoop trunk. And uh, the agreement was that because this is a, a new and experimental object store, then it had a separated release lifecycle and it was separated from the from the core HDFS and, and the ARM code. So after a while, it was so independent that the code itself is moved to a separated but Hadoop repository. And Ozone had a, a lot of releases, so the release cadence is usually three to four months. And it had alpha releases, beta releases, and finally, in this September, Ozone had the first stable release. The latest news is right now we have an open vote in the Hadoop developer list to move out from the Hadoop project and manage Ozone as a separated project, separated top level project. If it's voted, it will be proposed to the Apache board and that could be the next step. If you are interested about the history in more details. I, I really like it that this, this history markdown, this is a link. So you can just check the Apache slash Hadoop Ozone repository and you will see not just the readme, but a detailed history that, that uh, about Ozone. So this is exactly the same picture what you, uh, uh, which was shared with uh, during the yarn talk. So these are the commits in Side the Hadoop project. The Ozone uses the HDDS gyro project and the orange is the Ozone. So you can see the orange. This is all of the, the Ozone commits. So actually today, the majority of the Hadoop commits are, are Ozone commits. So what can Ozone provide? So the two biggest problem what we saw is that one is the scalability, that HDFS is not very good with handling a lot of small files. Just because when it was designed, it was not a goal. At that time, we had a lot of huge files. Today, we have a lot of small files. So Ozone is designed to support easily billion of keys. Actually, we tested with, with billion of keys. The other one is this, um, my favorite uh, slide or picture, that the usability, that the Ozone can be used not only from Flink or HBase or, or the Hadoop ecosystem, but it provides an AWS S3 compatible interface. So can you, you can use it from any tool which, which can be used with AWS S3. It also has a container storage interface, so the storage itself can be mounted to, to any container with the help of, of container storage interface. So this is the quick overview. So actually, this is the Ozone web page, so you can just check that what are the main points there. But I think we already mentioned it, that this is consistent. And actually, this is very similar to the HDFS. It's not something which is, which is brand new. But I like this quote. I don't know who is the original author. I think it's either Anu Engineer or, or Arpit or Jinendra. That Ozone is a spiritual successor to, to HDFS. So Ozone reuses all of the knowledge which is learned from the 15 years of, of HDFS, but some of the points are, are changed. Some of the design decisions are revisited after the 15 years. And this presentation, I would like to share that this one, that what are the differences? You know that it's, it's always a big problem for me because it's very hard to demo a storage. How can I demo a storage? You can, I, can, I can share a comment, but you know that it's it's not like a, a UI, and and I was thinking a lot that how can I explain the storage because the real important uh, decisions are under the hood, and with this approach we will compare the HDFS and the Ozone just to to check that what's going on what what are the main design decisions why Ozone can be more scalable. So we will have five important differences. First, the key and uh, block space separation. So if you are talking about the storage of HDFS, which is exactly the same scheme what we have in Amazon, 
that this is a very well-known pattern that a file which should be stored or a key in case of ozone is uh, split to smaller blocks and the sp smaller blocks are stored in data nodes so these are two independent okay not independent these are two problems one is that we need to split the file and create the blocks and if you have a file, I need to have a list of the blocks. The other one is that the blocks, the binary part, should be replicated between the data nodes. So actually, these are two maps, right? One is that the file should be mapped to the blocks, that what kind of block IDs there for this specific file. And the blocks should be uh, mapped to locations. In HDFS, both of these maps are handled in name node. But in Ozone, we, we follow a different approach. So what we did is just cut the responsibilities of the name node. And we have two leader nodes. So we have a storage container merger. This is the bottom from the, from the green boxes, which is nothing more, just a component to replicate huge binary blocks. That's the block to location mapping. On top of that, we have the Ozo Manager, which is responsible for the key space management. This is the file or key to uh, block mapping. And obviously, we have a few other optional services, like the Recon, which is a web UI and prediction service, or S3 REST interface, which can provide the AWS S3 compatible interface, or the container storage interface services. But that's the main difference, that we have two leader service for, for key space management and block space management. Why is it good? Well. When the Ozone has been started, the original vision was that if we separate the block space management, this very low level layer, which can just replicate huge binary blobs, it can be reused. There is a feature branch in Hadoop, where, which is more like a proof of concept, which was a block storage. So a storage which can provide any storage uh, to mount to containers to nodes and this was the c block and it was also designed lower level layer is designed to make it reusable even for hdfs or maybe for hbase or any other big data but the today picture is that the lower level layer the storage container manager which and the data nodes are used the ozone manager so both are um, ozone and on top of that, we have an Ozone client. And, uh, and on top of the Ozone client, we have additional services like S3 Gateway, Hadoop compatible file system, container storage interface. And there are some ongoing uh, thinking that how can we reuse the libhdfs or Fuse file system or HDFS to, to provide a Fuse layer for Ozone. OK. So that's the first main differences. And I mentioned that it's hard to demo the storage, but I would like to try it out. So I would like to show just very small chunks of Ozone to demonstrate the differences. So this difference was the, diff the, the separation of key space and and block space. And what we can see here is an Ozone install. So you can download the Ozone, and these are the subdirectories. And if you go to the Compose Ozone folder, you will have an example uh, de definition here, an example Ozone cluster. So the only thing what you need to do is just start Ozone. You can scale and say that you need three data nodes. So three data nodes started and it was 10 seconds and I have a fully running Ozone cluster. You can see three data nodes and here it's clearly visible that I have multiple leader nodes. So this is one, one of the Ozone manager, the storage container manager, and I have a few optional nodes because just by default they are started. So we will use this cluster uh, next but let's go back to the second big difference. So unit of replication. It's very, 
HDFS is well known about this uh, scalability problem that it can handle roughly two to 300 million of files. And it's usually, I, I have heard it in an other presentation that if you have a dedicated Hadoop developer, then maybe you can scale it up to three to 600 million of files, but it's just harder and harder. Why is this limit? Well, we already discussed that with the, in this story scheme, we are creating blocks for each of the files. For each of the file, we need at least one block. So 100 million of file means at least 100 million of blocks. And the problem is that the unit of the replication in HDFS is the block. So all of the blocks are reported one by one by the data nodes to the leader nodes that, okay, this block is fine, this block is fine, this block is fine. And all of the blocks are are stored in the, or the metadata of the blocks are stored in the leader node of the HDFS. So this is changed with Ozone. In Ozone, the, the unit of the replication is not the block anymore, which helps a lot. The unit of the replication is the container. And unfortunately, the container, it's not the, maybe it's not the best name because you know that we have a lot of other meaning of the container. So this container is the good old container which can be found in the, in the cargo ship. So the container can contain, one container can contain multiple blocks. This is what you can see in this, this picture that we have container, container contains multiple blocks and the blocks can, can be uploaded in, in smaller chunks. Why is it good? Well, the big advantage of this approach that we don't need to report all of the blocks one by one. So the data node can report that, oh, I have the, these hundred of the blocks, or I, can, I have all of the blocks which start with zero, where the identifier is started with zero. This is something like the container. In the bottom of this uh, slide, you can see that the block ID it's based on a container ID and a local ID, which is very similar to, let's say, the container ID is the city in an address, and the local ID is the is the is the street. So first of all, we need to find the container, and after that, inside the container, we will have a block ID. But the containers are replicated, which makes everything very scalable. So. This is the previous picture. We already discussed that some of the responsibilities of the name node are split in Ozone. But in fact, in the remaining storage container merger, which is responsible for replicating huge binary blobs, in fact, this responsible for replicating containers. This is, this is why we call it storage container manager. And the metadata of the blocks are handled by the data nodes. This is an other big advantage because in the data node reports only containers. So it doesn't matter how many files do you have, you can just uh, scale it up without any limit. So let's go back to my ozone cluster. So it's just running here. And let's try to find something which is related to the containers. So I'm going to check the, uh, going to the leader node. So I just attached my shell to the leader node. And first of all, I need a few objects. Ozone has an internal load generator. This is Freon because you know that the Freon is the enemy of the Ozone, right? The Ozone layer. So, and the load generator is the biggest enemy of a storage. So we have a load generator which can be used to generate a lot of keys on different uh, different way. So let's start with this Ozone client generator, Ozone Freon, just to have some data because it's a brand new cluster. So I need 100 keys. And okay, this is just generated. So I have a few keys generated. And now I can use an other Ozone subcommand, the Ozone inside. So there are multiple inside points, and one is the heartbeat. So I can just check what's going on 
heartbeat level. So with the, with the variables mode, minus V, I can see the RPC protocol content. So the heartbeat here. So this is the heartbeat from the data node to the leader node. And you don't need to understand all of the details, but something which is interesting is that, okay, this, these are pipeline reports. I think the containers are already already reported back to the, yeah, we have an incremental container report. So let's go to here and just generate a few other keys. And we can see that what's going on here. So this is the heartbeat from the, I'm looking for something which is the container, but I need to wait. The, so the problem is that I'm not lucky enough because the, the heartbeat, uh, heartbeat uh, period is 30 minutes. Okay, so let's check if we have a new, oh, we have the container report. You see that we don't need to understand all of the details, but here what we can see is that the, the, the replication unit is container. So we are not talking about some kind of blocks, but we are talking about, oh, I have the container ID, it's open, It's we have some space which is used and it doesn't matter what kind of blocks are stored here. Okay, let's go back to the, the presentation. Third difference. And actually, it's not just the difference, but it's a very important rule of Ozone or the Ozone development that we wouldn't like to reinvent the wheel. That's very, very important when the Ozone is designed. Just because the storage itself or, or, or writing a new storage, it's it's very com it's already very complex. So to make it stable enough, it's uh, the better to reuse existing technologies or, or well-known uh, solutions. Okay, when we replicate the data, we need to replicate two parts, the real data, the byte array, and some kind of metadata, right, block information. For the metadata replication, we use Ruft. Ruft is a very well-known algorithm, and it's a consensus algorithm for managing replicated log, and it's an understandable consensus algorithm. Let's talk about these two parts, replicated log and understandable. So it seems to be a little bit complex, this page, and it's not required to understand all of the details, but this is the main structure of the raft, that the raft itself replicates commands or actions. So in, we can see here three data nodes, and there is one leader which is elected by the three data nodes. And the new commands, in case of Ozone, it's some kind of write, are replicated in, in the form of a log. And if a new command or action is added to the majority of the data nodes, it will be applied to, to the state machine, which is some, some shared state or, or well-defined state, like a, a data internal database or, or memory. That's the main structure of, uh, of ref, Ruft. So it's, it's, uh, it's defined as a replicated log, but it, in fact, we are just replicating the data or the state. The understandable, it's coming from the original paper. So there is a short version of the paper, which is just uh, 20 pages and the, and the long version, which is a PhD, and I think it's 200 pages. So understandable doesn't mean simple, but uh, it's supposed to be easier to implement or, or easier to maintain because this uh, understandable property. So, Ozone uses Apache Redis, which is an incubator project, and it's embeddable. That's very, very important. So if you have ever used Zookeeper, you can think it like a Zookeeper, which can be started inside the process. It's also very flexible. So you can plug in different type of transport, Hadoop RPC, gRPC. You can replace the state machine. You can replace the persistent layer. And it's also very fast. So it tested 
with Ozone, and it has a lot of advanced feature to to batch multiple requests and and send out ad hoc heartbeats and so on. This Raft implementation is used in two places in Ozone. One for AJ. So for high availability for the leader nodes, we need to replicate the state. The other one is the data node itself. So this is the, the high level picture. So let's say I have 100 of data nodes. The 100 of data nodes are split to three data node groups, which are forming this quorum. They are electing one leader and the client will connect to the leader and the data replication between the leader and the follower is just good old raft which is a standard standard uh, algorithm and uh, widely used for example the etcd which is the back end of the back end store of kubernetes uses exactly the same algorithm raft so let's go back to here it's very yeah. It's 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 harder to see that we have raft, but I can try to prove it with some. Okay, so we can check the log of the data node, and unfortunately, it's printed out to the standard uh, standard error. So I'm just redirecting to the standard output and candidate. So what we can see here is some kind of leader election inside the data node. So I have just three data nodes, which means that uh, it's one single uh, group or quorum. But we can say that there's some kind of leader action as here, which will do all of the data replication between the, the data nodes. Okay. So third, third uh, uh, big difference, uh, the persistence actually so what we need to, to do is uh we already discussed that the storage is that uh, st storing data and some kind of metadata how can where can we store metadata there are multiple options so one option is just store everything in the memory actually this is uh, what hdfs uh, follow other one is just storing everything in an external database. In that case, the high availability is not our problem anymore because we can just store in a high available key value store. This is, for example, uh, followed by the HopsFS. And there is an other option to keep something in the memory which fits in the memory, but also use very fast local store. And this is what we do with Ozone. You remember that this is our number one rule, that do not reinvent the wheel. So what we are doing is, uh, again, just uh, Ozone uses a, a very well-known uh, solution, RocksDB, which is a fork of level DB, and it's a local key value store. So it's something like the SQLite. Locally, you can use it as a key value store. There is no server, just you can use it from your your process and it's based on the lock structured merge trees and it's uh, widely used so there is a, a storage backend for mysql mongo so it's very very well tested and very 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 fast so we don't ozone doesn't need to keep everything in the memory because it's uh it's fast enough to to persist something on the disk and just uh reading it when it's required with very very good caching so this is again at a, at a very very big help for for getting better scalability. Okay, let's just go back to the cluster and try to find something which is RocksDB related. So this is my cluster. I have this. Uh, so this is one of the leader nodes. And here I have just some kind of database. So this seems to be a RocksDB. But we don't know what is inside, right? This is a local local files. But RocksDB provides an um, a tool which can just, I think it's list column families, can print out all of the internal column families. So I think it's column family equals containers. We we discussed that containers are the are the unit of the, the replications. So let's try to scan them. Okay, I have one containers. 
Unfortunately, I couldn't see the real content because, again, an industry standard protobuf is used here. Fortunately, I have an ozone helper method, which can do exactly the same and parse all of the data. So, yes, so this is the parsed version of the, the, the same data. This is actually the, the available data node group. But oh, no, this is the available container. So this is just one container. It's replicated with the Redis, and this is the usage statistics, which can be used. So there is no information about the blocks here. But I also can check the data node groups. I think it was pipeline and not pipelines. Oh, maybe it's pipelines. Oh, so this is the content of the local DB, just with all of the data node data all of the node information, which is uh, maintained on the leader side. So let's go back uh, to the presentation. And the last one is the usability. So this is my favorite one. And there are multiple dimension, dimension of the usability. First of all, we already we have already seen that how easy it is to start the uh, ozone. Just CD Compose Ozone Docker Compose App. You can do exactly the same with a secure cluster. So it's very, very easy to, it's let's say 30 seconds to start a secure cluster locally, just try it out with, with real nodes in, in, with the help of, of containerization. For me, it's very important. I think we need to invest a lot just to, to provide better developer and, and operation usability. The other one with what we already we already discussed that it should be available not only from for the Hadoop compatible file system, but for example, AWS S3, just to make it easier to use from a, a Python command. So for example, if I go to here and I use so this AWS command line, it's pure AWS. You can, you can use it for real AWS or you can use Ozone. The only thing what you need, just change the endpoint. And let's say I'm creating a bucket and bucket equals bucket one. Just let's try to create one bucket. Yeah, and it's created. So it works exactly as the AWS S3. So that's the other important part of the usability. And I believe that we, Comparing with the HDFS, we need to work a lot to make the developer and administration experience better. For example, we introduced um, some tagging process to make it easier to understand uh, many, many configuration options, which is usually available for, for Hadoop uh, components. And you have already seen that we have different type of uh, of of uh, tools like the Freon or Insight, what I just demonstrated earlier. So this is the web UI. This is also for the usability. Just uh, this is a separated component which can download all of the data from the other services. It can store it historically. It can predict um, what will happen. For example, if if a out of space uh, error can be expected, and it can help to understand uh, the status of the containers, looks and everything. So this is the quick overview of uh, of Ozone, and uh, with the help of of differentiate between Ozone and HDFS. If you are more interested, I can also recommend a YouTube channel. So Ozone has a YouTube uh, channel, and there are two playlists. One is the Ozone Explained, which is very similar to this talk, just uh, discussing about different type of uh, architectural questions. And ozone development can be useful for the contributors. So for example, how to debug Ozone in your IDE, or how to build it, or how to run it in, in Kubernetes. So I can recommend these uh, just search for Apache Hadoop Ozone uh, in the YouTube and, and you can follow it or you can just ping me or join to the, check the Ozone channel on the ASF Slack and questions. Any question? 
How are you doing scale testing for like billion files? How are we generating test data? Very good question. So there are multiple ways. One way is just to make Ozone fast enough to generate a, a lot of data. So we did a 1 billion key test to with real data and uh, and it worked well. This is what we did. And there is a new development uh, new issue or new proposal to develop an offline data gen generator tool, which can generate a lot of data even faster. So generating 1 billion key was a few days, but we will have a, an offline generator tool very soon, which can prove that we, we, have, uh, we can handle 10 billions of keys. Ozone supports authentication and encryption like HDFS, Kerberos. Yes, so Ozone based on Hadoop RPC. So the encryption part is, uh, or the security is very, very similar to the HDFS. This is the spiritual successor part. And there are a little difference that the block tokens are a little bit smarter, but the basic Kerberos info is very, the basic Kerberos architecture is very, very similar. And yes, we have transparent data encryption exactly the same as uh, as the HDFS. So you need the key MS and you can just use it. Why do you think, when do you think Ozone will be stable enough to migrate existing production HDFS cluster? Yes, that's a very good question. So the, the last release, it's, it's the first 1.0 release. And actually we are testing a lot to to make it as stable as possible. I know about one, one uh, company, one Chinese company who uses it in production even today, but this is a totally new product. That, that's a good question. I, I think it would, the, the best approach is just try it out and start with a small data set. So, so if you would like to use you can just try it out and test it and and migrate incrementally the data. You can start with non with not so critical data, I think. So there will be a separated talk from Umar tomorrow about UFS, which can be a, an interesting approach where you can just change one directory from HDFS to Ozone. Any thoughts on Ozone impact on HBase use cases? Yes, so that's, uh, we already had some HBase tests, tests, but we need some more work for full HBase support because the different approach how HDFS and Ozone handles the HSync and, and Sync, which are required for HBase. So this is still in progress. How do you compare Ozone to objects Ozone to object store. So Ozone itself is an object store under the hood, but so it's a first class object store. So we have keys and values, that's all. But because we would like to support the use cases of HDFS, there are some tricky secondary indexes to provide very good experience for all of the Hadoop compatible file system. So Comparing with other, it depends. So it's a new project. And I think one of the main selling point is that it is a first class citizen of all of the Hadoop environments, and it has the same or actually better scalability to the, than HDFS. So there are other object stores, but, but it uses the same architecture what HDFS is used, or almost the same. So I rev revisited HDFS, so it can provide the same stability and and scalability or better scalability than HDFS. Oh, Ozone and MinIO. So yeah, that's the big. That's a that's a good question. MinIO is older, but. Um, so actually, when I shared one picture about the three data nodes, which are creating a rough group. So by default, MinIO is nothing more just that one group. And you need a separated federation, as far as I know, MinIO to achieve, to, to have multiple pipelines. So it can be compared, but actually Ozone is, is more like the HDFS. When we are from the beginning, we are thinking about uh, using 
thousands of nodes. What do you think erase recording will? Yes, it definitely will be supported. So there is a there is the next big big uh, thing. The erasure, the question is the erasure recording support in Ozone, and this is the the next item in the, on the list to do it. Because we have different type of architecture with these containers, it can be different from the HDFS, and there is an active uh, uh, design process in the community. So there is a dedicated Slack channel. If somebody is interested, there is also a design doc in the dried up, but it's still not finished. There are multiple options and will be considered. Is it better to migrate from HDFS to Ozone or to close bit solution? Like, so that's another question. It's on-prem or not on-prem. So. Uh, the goal with the Ozone that any time when you would like to move from cloud to on-prem or on-prem to cloud, on-prem you can just use Ozone. So Ozone is supposed to be comp compatible with S3, so you can decide in any way at any time. That That's the goal. If you need cloud or on-prem, this, this is your, it depends from the use case. I think it's it's very good to use an object store in an on-prem, but but it, there are a lot of factors. But the main goal is provide something which which is like the object store, like the S3, and that keys you can free to free to move any data between cloud and on-prem because you can use exactly the same applications or um, in, in both environments. Okay, hope I answered all of the questions. Thank you very much. If you are interested, Ozone also has a weekly community meeting. You can find it on the Hadoop uh, wiki. And you can just join and ask on the ASF Slack, ASF Slack or, the, or, the, or the community meeting. So thank you very much, all of the questions. Or you can ping me at any time in, the, in this Hopin platform.